What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021, uh, I guess post-com. This is my Players' Cup 3 Winners Round 2 match versus Brad. Now, Brad brought an interesting team and by interesting I mean like I don't know what this team wants to do versus me. Um, something to note is it was a Charizard team but there was no Sunny Day user. So if it was, I believe it was regular Charizard so I guess it would set up its own sun. I, don't, I thought it was it was weird. I remember when I was looking at his team on paper, I was like, why is it not G-Max? Or something like that. I don't know. It was weird. I, I can't remember exactly why it wasn't running Sunny Day anywhere on the, on the team and had no way of setting up Sun, but it was like kind of crazy. Um, I did take some <laughs> recommendations, and I actually went back and skimmed through the match, so I have an idea as to what happened in this game. Uh, but yeah, now I'll actually be able to effectively post con. <laughs> So, if you guys enjoyed this at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like, and then subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And that's my comment question of the day. Which member of my squad is your favorite? Like, I feel like there's a lot of goons on there. Anyways, uh, versus this team, it's generally the same with most matchups. I need to get off a of Trick Room and kill things with Calyrex. That's pretty much it. But I did end up leading off with uh, Thunderous and... Torn not Thunderous. <laughs> or not Tornadoes. Thunderous and Grimmsnarl from this matchup. Uh, because I figured what I wanted to do above all else was get a Defiant boost and hopefully sweep because at plus one, like Tornadus or Thunderous, I can't speak today, is really tough to deal with. I also have a Lumbear, which means I'm immune to at least one Will-O-Wisp. So I actually felt pretty confident with this lead. I end up pulling the trigger a little bit too early though. I go for the Dynamax turn one, which I don't know if that was the play. I really don't. Um, and I was originally going to go for a light screen here, but I didn't end up going for it in the end because I was like, eh, I don't know how bulky they're running their Sableye. Sableye doesn't run like anything other than bulk. So since I'm not Life Orb Thunderous, I'm uh, Lumberry, I'm going to have to double into it. So I go for the max Airstream into this uh, Sableye, anticipating a Will-O-Wisp because I did not want to get taunted later on in the game. I said priority number one is get rid of Sableye, priority number two is get up Trick Room. So I'm going to double into it with a Spirit Break and a max Airstream as I Dynamax the Thunder here. By the way, shout out to Mizora in the uh, Discord channel for lending me their Shiny Thunders for this tournament. I really appreciate you. Will-O-Wisp goes off. Uh, it's going to activate my Lumberry. So, burn doesn't really matter here. I've just lost my item in case they want to go for something like, I don't know, sleep or another burn or something. <laughs> but, as you can see, I did make the right call in doubling into it. So, I'm going to be able to knock this thing out with a Spirit Break. Uh, and just get rid of one of their Pokemon super early in the match. A very problematic Pokemon at that. And I've also increased my Grimmsnarl speed to the point where I'm actually outspeeding the Rotom Wash, which tells me it doesn't have a ton of speed, uh, since my Grimmsnarl has zero speed investment. You would expect this thing to not quite outspeed it yet. Uh, however, they do go for the Nasty Plot, and at this point I'm like, okay, there is absolutely no chance they don't Dynamax this thing. And I don't feel comfortable facing this thing at... <laughs> at plus two with my Thunderous, since I, like, my best option is pretty much going for a Max Lightning. Um, and I have to make a really tough choice, to be honest. Like, definitely right here I want to go for a Light Screen to try to be able to survive the hit with my Thunderous a little bit better. Uh, but I'm also going to have to sacrifice the Grim Snarl to a Zacian if they decide to target into it. So a really annoying decision I have to make. Um, and I believe I went for the Light Screen here. I might have Thunder Wave, though. I know I, at some point there was a, a Thunder Wave that went off, but no, I do go for the light screen. And I'm going to go for the max lightning because it's my strongest move versus Zacian. You might be confused at this play, but I kind of recognize something. My matchup versus Zacian was kind of poor in this game. Um, I kind of just said like, all right, listen, I can probably eat a hit from Rotom Wash if I have light screen up with my Calyrex. I need to get as much damage off on the Zacian as I can right now. <laughs> Any bit of damage is fine, so I do end up going for this Max Lightning into the Zacian, fully expecting to possibly lose my Thunderous this turn. So Light Screen goes off, I'm going to be able to eat the hit a little bit better. Go for my Max Lightning. And it does a solid amount, it does a little bit over half, but uh, it's it would have been great if I could have like one-shot that. Uh, at this point in the match, I was like, yeah, if I get a crit, that'd be super sweet. Uh, because at this point, I know what adjustment I need to make to win the game in the, in the second round, so I'm like, if I can get an early lead... Uh, in terms of game wins, that'd be phenomenal. But plus one Behemoth Blade does a ton of damage. I'm pretty much going to lose my Thunderous right here if they target into it with the Rotom Wash, which they do. They go for the Max Geyser, uh, knowing that they need to get rid of this Thunderous ASAP since they would lose their Restricted if they didn't. 
and they do set up the rain, which kind of undoes the whole light screen thing. <laughs> Since they're at plus two and they have the rain up, it's essentially like I didn't set up a light screen. Uh, but it's still it's still really helpful for cutting the damage because things that would have been one shot are no longer gonna get one shot. Um, I believe I do go Incineroar here because I want that Intimidate, and it's more of a sack than anything. Because I'm like, all right, I, I can't really afford to switch in the Calyrex on a Max Geyser, you know. Uh, so this is more of a sack than anything. I believe here I go for a fake out onto the Zacian since it's kind of free, uh, even though I'm going to trade it for the uh, Rotom Wash's Max Geyser there. Uh, and I go for the Thunder Wave onto the Zacian. So this is actually the turn that kind of won me the game in the end because I, I got a little bit lucky on game one, but I'm pretty confident with the adjustment I made on game two, I would have been able to win game three anyways. Uh, but here, Charizard is going to switch in and get Thunder Waved, and that's where things kind of went wrong for them. I don't think under any circumstance they should have switched out the Zacian there. I think that given the conditions on the field, a Protect would have sufficed. Like, switching in Charizard this early was definitely not the play. But they do go for the Max Geyser here. And they're going to take out my Incineroar despite the light screen since they're at plus two in the rain. And now I have quite the game ahead of me. <laughs> I have quite the game ahead of me. I'm going to send in the Calyrex. because I have no other option here. And the only thing I can do is hope that the Charizard gets um, fully paralyzed and I can get off a Trick Room. Because I, I should be able to take the Rotom Wash Max Geyser. Like, just barely. I think it might be a roll. And I'm behind a light screen and the rain is up, so maybe, maybe I can eat the Charizard Heat Wave if they're going for that. But I wasn't confident in that. Because, like, you know... Calyrex is a really, really bulky Pokemon, and with Light Screen and Rain Up, Charizard isn't doing a ton of damage. I still have to be concerned, though. So here, uh, I end up going for the Protect first. I forgot about that. Uh, and the reason is because I wanted to decrease the damage coming out from the Rotom. I, I go for a Spirit Break, and they actually make a really decent call on this turn. Uh, they end up doubling into the Grim Snarl. So the Max Geyser goes into the Grim Snarl. Uh, I just want to point out, though, that if they didn't... Like, I also... Even though that was technically the correct play, uh, I disagree with that play because of what they earned from it. Essentially, here is the risk-reward there, right? The the risk was me getting up Trick Room and immediately winning. Uh, and the reward was KOing the Grim Snarl, which wasn't too much of a help in the rest of the game anyways. Uh, especially since I was expecting to get off one Spirit Break and then lose it. So I already got what I needed. Uh, so here I'm going to go ahead and uh, go for the Trick Room. I basically just need to dodge like a Thunderbolt and not a Thunderbolt. I basically need to be able to live a Thunderbolt and whatever this Charizard wants to go for. And Charizard does get fully paralyzed. I, I think they would have had to bank on Air Slash Flinch there since there was no way a fire move KO'd me with Rain and Light Screen. Uh, in retrospect, now that I'm watching this match, I didn't get that lucky with that since I would have been fine in the end, I think. So I, I believe I do cut it close though. Um, so here I'm going to go for the Glacial Lance. This is where you just find out that Calyrex is absolutely broken. Look how much this does. Look how much this does. Keep in mind this is a neutral Glacial Lance versus Rotom. That is resisted. And when I say neutral, I mean like it doesn't have any attack boost. This is a resisted neutral, <laughs> if that's even how you say it, uh, Glacial Lance. And now I get up to plus one. And if Rotom took that much, and the Zacian's already taken a lot of damage, I don't think it's going to live it. I kind of recognize that at this point, all I needed to do was not get paralyzed there, and I would have had a 100% win. Granted, there were no double protects, too. There was a lot of things that could have gone wrong, and I think my opponent definitely played to their outs as much as they could. Um, but here, it's it's kind of over. Like All I have to do is keep clicking Glacial Lance, and as long as I don't get the literal lowest roll possible, I should be fine. So here, I click it. <laughs> I actually double-checked the base power. I'm like... Why did it do that much to Rotom? There's no way that move is only like 100-something, right? <laughs> I thought it was like 150 after that, but no, it, it is it is not that. It is a reasonably powerful move. God, how much how much would that do if it was single target, though? Because, like, that's double targeting. The, the damage gets cut. Anyways, here they go for a Protect with both of their Pokemon because they're trying to stall at the Trick Room. They recognize that that's their win con. They need to make sure I can't KO both of these Pokemon with a single Glacial Lance. Um... And they end up going for a double protect again on the next turn. Since I believe... Actually, I think I still had, like, another turn of Trick Room after this. So I don't think it would have mattered too much. 
Unless they got the triple. No, no, I had two turns of Trick Room, so even if they protected this turn, I had the next turn, so it didn't matter. Anyways, here comes the Glacial Lance. And there's the game. So yeah, um, I end up taking game one in kind of a lucky fashion, more or less. I don't really think it mattered too much, uh, since, yeah, like I was taking life orb damage and stuff, but I think that I would have still been able to pick up the win if the Charizard was able to get the attack off, but it, it wasn't able to because of the paralysis and the rain, you know, with light screen up. You, you get my point. Anyways, uh, I got a little bit lucky, but I think that when you see how I play game two, I think I was fine. So I sort of recognize that Rotom Wash is a huge threat to me, and I'm not really too scared of the Charizard, to be honest. Charizard did very little in that game, and with no sun, Charizard isn't the most powerful Pokemon on the field. So I kind of recognize that, hey, maybe Appleton's time to shine is right now. Uh, so I believe at this point in the match, me and my opponent are just talking in DMs. Here we go. So I'm going to go ahead, lock myself into this Appleton team once more, and now I sort of recognize that Appleton's actually really nice in this matchup. I have to be careful with the Zacian, of course. I need to be able to take care of that Zacian in one way or another, uh, but as long as I take care of it in a timely manner, I can completely mess up this team by bringing Appleton. Rotom Wash doesn't like it, Crocodile doesn't like it, Sableye more or less is fine with it, but in the end, uh, Appleton wins since uh, Sableye doesn't do too much damage. Rillaboom does no damage to it whatsoever. There's only like two Pokemon on their side of the field that can do damage to this thing, and it's Charizard and Zacian, and <laughs> one of those isn't really the strongest option for them. So I do lock myself into um, a different lead. I end up bringing the Appleton over the Thunderous in this game, I believe. Uh, I forgot what I just clicked just now. But my opponent is taking their sweet time. Uh, I might just cut to where we start battling because I have no idea what I need to say or how long I need to say it. I suppose I could just fill this time by talking to you guys about life and the pursuit of happiness. Once, when I was a child, I thought I wanted to be a fireman. And then, I thought I wanted to be a policeman. Later on, I found out I wanted to be a physicist. And now, I am sad. The end. <laughs> Also, guys, I'm streaming a lot more often now. I'm going to be doing some variety streaming. Uh, I'm definitely doing Pokemon streams Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, however, I'm going to do some variety stuff on the off days. I might not stream Tuesdays and Thursdays, but beyond that, I'm probably going to be streaming like Minecraft and Nuzlocks and stuff, but who knows? Anyways, the match is starting. 666 <laughs> six, six versus 777. Seven, seven. Who will win? All right. So, they lead off Sableye and Crocodile, which I think is a pretty baller lead for me, to be honest, because I let off Grimmsnarl Appleton. Uh, th this lead for them is not looking too great. Uh, I have a lot of options here. I can go for a Reflect. I can go for an Apple Acid onto this Crocodile and just be done with it, to be honest. Snarl is obviously an option for them, um, but I, I believe, yeah, I just decided to knock out the Sableye again because I didn't want to have to mess with Taunt. And I was under the impression that I didn't need a Dynamax just yet. I was definitely being a little bit more conservative with my Dynamax this game. I said, look, last game was really rough because I Dynamax so early. I'm just going to go for the Apple Acid and the Spirit Break, and that should do enough. They go for the High Haunts power, and it actually does a ton of damage to the Grimmsnarl. Spirit Break here does a ton of damage to the Sableye. Uh, however, I am intimidated because of, that, um, because of that Crocodile, so I'm not doing as much. Snarl goes off, which actually lowers the damage from my Appleton, which means that I can't actually knock out the Sableye this turn. They're going to be able to get off another turn with the Sableye, which is kind of annoying. Uh, in retrospect, I could have just Draco Meteor and been done with it, but I wasn't really... I didn't want to force myself to switch out the Appleton, but in the end, I was going to be forced to switch it out anyway, since I would have to take another Snarl or something. So here, uh, I end up just doing pretty much the same thing. Uh, I Spirit Break and go for the... Apple Acid, or no, I reflect and go for the Apple Acid, uh, in hopes that now I'll be able to take the High Horsepower. I don't believe I do, though. So there's the High Horsepower, and it does knock me out. It wasn't a crit or anything, it was just enough. There's the Snarl. It's not going to be enough to save the Sableye from Appleton, however, um, it is enough where Appleton's probably going to have to switch out from the field sometime soon, because he's kind of useless at the moment, 
He's at minus one attack, so I can't even switch over to using uh, Grassy Glide instead. Which is kind of disappointing, because I really like using Appleton with Grassy Glide. It's just a generally fun Pokemon. So, I have to switch out here. You have to send something in new. Uh, I end up going Calyrex, because Trick Room seems really, really solid right now. I have Reflect Up. This, uh, Grim uh, this Crocodile could do a decent amount of damage. However, uh, now that the Zacian's in the field, I'm kind of second-guessing myself. I'm like, eh, what do I do here? Uh, Zacian obviously could one-shot my Calyrex right now, uh, especially since it's at plus one. Even though I have a Reflect Up, I'm not going to be able to eat the hit very well. So my play is to switch in the Incineroar for my Calyrex and just go for the Protect with my Appleton. Since that'll buy me some time, it'll let me intimidate the Zacian. I'll definitely be able to eat a Behemoth Blade at neutral with my Incineroar behind a Reflect. And uh, it also gives me an Intimidate on the Zacian and the Crocodile, which is really, really nice uh, for later on in the game where I, where I need to get up my Trick Room. So, I retrieve the Calyrex, send in the Incineroar, get off my little Intimidate. I now have Fake Out Pressure, which is kind of nice. Uh, however, the Fake Out Pressure is more so just to get the Calyrex in for free, since there isn't much that my Appleton can do on the field at the moment. There's the Sacred Sword. They end up expecting the uh, <laughs> they ended up expecting the Incineroar to come in on that slot, which is kind of interesting because imagine how that would have worked out for them if the Incineroar did come in on that slot. That would imply that I actually went for a Trick Room that turn, and probably would have won at that point. Uh, so I didn't really agree with that play either. Here, obviously, um, I can kind of just get out the Incineroar for free uh, by switching in the Calyrex again. Or I think I actually I went for like Fake Out and switched in Calyrex at the end of the turn since Appleton was kind of useless. Yeah, because the Fake Out on the Zacian was free. Oh no, I tried to be big brain and I parting shotted. I, I parting shotted to get in the Appleton again. As they withdraw the Crooked Owl, which is kind of nice because I definitely keep my Incineroar this turn. There's the Rotom. Switch out my Appleton. Get in the Calyrex again. And the reason I felt comfortable doing this is because my opponent is running play rough Zacian. Um, even if they were to attack the Appleton slot that turn, it wouldn't have really mattered too much because it's neutralization while I'm behind Reflect with play rough. Uh, it would have done damage, but it wouldn't have done as much as Behemoth Blade, and they would have never clicked Behemoth Blade onto a non Dynamaxed Appleton that turn. So here I have a decision to make. Uh, I believe I do just go for the parting shot again because it's kind of free versus Asian, and I guess I just get an Appleton again. And I kind of accept that I'm probably going to have to Dynamax this Appleton for this game, because two of their three Pokemon are Appleton weak, and the remaining one can be dealt with with my remaining two. So, kind of a strange end game here. Uh, I'm mostly concerned about Zacian more than anything. Neither Rotom or Crocodile is really a concern to me at this point in the game. I do end up playing a little bit sloppy, I think. I play a little bit sloppy here. They go for the Nasty Plot. The uh, reason I sent in the Appleton is because what is this Rotom going to do to me? Uh, I times 4 resist both of their stab moves, <laughs> and I believe they're running Nasty Plot and Protect, so they're not doing any damage to Appleton. I can pretty much target into that thing every turn with a Dynamax uh, Appleton for free. In comes in Calyrex again. Uh, that is a minus 1 Crocodile, so it's not doing tons of damage. I should be able to get off a Trick Room. However, it is a plus two Rotom, which is kind of concerning. Uh, so here, I just go for it. I say, whatever. Crocodile can, you know, go for a dark move into the Calyrex. As long as I'm able to get off this Trick Room, I should be fine. As long as they don't go for a Max Geyser, I should be okay. And here's where the interesting part of the game works. Here, here's, here's where the interesting part of the game occurs, I guess. Uh, it works out in a way that I didn't expect it to. So obviously at plus two, Rotom is their Dynamax target, right? So they're going to Dynamax the Rotom, which is completely what I expect any minute now, as soon as they select their move. There we go. Man's got the ball in his hand. And he's going to Dynamax his Rotom. And I believe he actually targets my Calyrex with a Max Geyser, which is not what I thought would happen at all. I thought maybe they would just switch out into Zacian to try to scare me off and, you know, KO the... Uh, 
either like protect the Rotom for some reason and get in the Zacian to scare me, or just, you know, target into the Calyrex with a move with uh, the Crocodile and get in the Zacian. One or the other, right? Because I felt like they could have saved the Dynamax a little bit later. I don't know. Anyways, I Dynamax the Appleton. I actually, like, the moment I clicked this move, I kind of regretted it because I expected the Zacian to come in. I was like, listen, if Zacian comes in, I lose, right? But it didn't. It didn't. They go for the Darkest Lair Rat into the Appleton for some reason. I think they just didn't expect the Dynamax. And they go for the Max Geyser into the Calyrex, which I live on 6 health. And I'm just like, okay, so I win, right? <laughs> that was so strange to me, because I didn't really think it would work out that way. I seriously thought it would work out where, like, they were just getting the Zacian. Anyways, point is, uh, I go for the uh, Max Overgrowth and deal some significant damage to the Rotom, which is incapable of eating a Citrus Berry or anything right now. Uh, so I will be able to two-shot it. And I get off my Trick Room. Now, at this point, I kind of have the opponent pinned, because the Grassy Terrain Recovery is going to make it so uh, I'll be more easily able to spam Glacial Lance with my Life Orb damage. Here, I believe, yeah, I just go for Protect, because I'm like, I can Protect versus the Crocodile and just KO the Rotom this turn, and if they end up not targeting into me, if they end up going for a Protect, uh, I'll be fine, right? So basically, this is the safest way to get some more HP on the Calyrex, to make it so I can click Glacial Lance a few times. They go for the Protect, they go for a High Horsepower, I Protect. I don't get the High Horsepower play either, because they could have just gone for the Darkest Lariat. Not only is it more accurate, but it also, you know... Maybe they expected Incinera or something. I guess they were trying to predict the Incinera. They did make some aggressive plays earlier in the match, but... I think they should have just gone with Darkest Lariat. They, I don't gain much by getting in Incinera. All I do is preserve Calyrex, and protecting just made more sense there. So, here, uh, I just go for the Glacial Lance, because it's free versus Crocodile. And I know for a fact I can actually take the Life Orb damage, so... I'm going to be able to knock out the Crocodile and knock out the Rotom here, and Crocodile's Assault Vest, right, so I'm just, I'm good to go. Like, there's no way they come back from this. But they do actually finally get in the Zacian, interestingly enough. Uh, and Zacian, even though it resists both of these hits, it's not going to appreciate them, because this is a Stab Max Overgrowth in Terrain. And the other one is just Glacial Lance, which nothing actually resists Glacial Lance. Resisting Glacial Lance is a myth. So there, I do a solid chunk of damage for a resisted move. And I go for my Glacial Lance and do an absurd amount of damage for a resisted move. Yeah, this Pokemon is absolutely busted. <laughs> like, you can't tell me that's resisted. Like, resisted is in hard quotes right there. So we're in a similar situation where I have a Calyrex that can easily one-shot both Pokemon that are coming in, even though they resist the move. Uh, so at this point, it's just a matter of, do they get double protect? Do I, you know, play correctly in the end of the game? Which, I'm gonna be able to here. I just keep clicking Glacial Lance and keep clicking Grass moves. It doesn't matter what happens. Obviously, they want to go for a uh, Protect on both their Pokemon here. Appleton's Dynamax ends. Uh, but even if Trick Room ends, I still actually have... <laughs> I still actually have Grassy Glide, which is kind of funny. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and click the Glacial Lance here on the Rotomization. And pro tip for all you guys using Calyrex, uh, make sure you PP max that move because only having eight is a crime. It's balanced because, you know, you only get to click it eight times. But also, you don't want to be that guy with only five Glacial Lances where two of them go into a Protect and you have to use two to one shot, or you have to use two to KO something. Because <laughs> then you're left with one extra. You have one, you have one PP of Wiggle Room. Like, that is not a good situation to be in. So, yeah. Um, I know for a fact that Glacial Lance was going to be able to KO the Rotom there, so I ended up just doubling into the Zacian in case Glacial Lance somehow didn't KO the Zacian. I got some more recovery too. Uh, and now they absolutely have to try to go for a double protect and try to stall the Trick Room. My Reflect wears off, and I just keep clicking my Busted Move. Rotom goes for the Protect. It does actually get the Protect. But the more important Pokemon to this game uh, is not so lucky. I'm going to be able to get off that Apple Acid just to spit on the Zacian a little bit. 
And then this Glacial Lance will pick up the KO on that Zacian, quite obviously. It's plus one Life Orb. This is... It's such an absurd Pokemon. <laughs> like, Calyrex is so gross. Anyways, there goes Zacian. I'm going to get up to plus two. Uh, and now it's just a Rotom on the field. It doesn't matter if my Zacian spontaneously combusted and just dropped. It doesn't matter if my Incineroar U-turned out of the match and went home. Uh, there is a Appleton on the other side of the field, and no Rotom wash can possibly need an Appleton. It's just physically impossible. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're good to go. I believe at this point my opponent just forfeits because they recognize, like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get that. Um, I'm a little bit annoyed that the Grassy Train wore off, though, because I could have gone for the Grassy Glide as a final little move. But, you know, it's, it's whatever. It's whatever. I'm going to go for the Glacial Lance. I go for the Apple Acid. Regardless of what happens, I'm fine. They go for the Thunderbolt. Yeah, look how much that did. I find that funny, though. They didn't knock out the Calyrex. Technically, they could have actually knocked out the Calyrex and gotten a little bit of recovery. So yeah, uh, I'm going to be able to KO that Rotom there. And that's game. I end up winning this set 2-0. The first game was kind of lucky. Second game was a little bit more decisive, uh, if I do say so myself, even though there was a little bit of luck, you know, in every game. That's just kind of how Pokemon is. So yeah, uh, with that, I'm going to call it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your continued support. Tomorrow, I'll be going into my round three match. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a nice one. Bye.